Welcome back to the Electrify podcast, brought to you by the creators of Electrify Expo, North America's largest EV festival coming to a major city near you. Well, joining us here is a great friend of mine, a great friend of yours. This is a, a gentleman that plays a major role in the automotive community, but not behind the wheel, behind the lens. Um, most people call him Larry Chen. I call him Larry Chen. So Larry Chen has joined us here. Um, what what a busy gentleman you are, man. I know you just got back from a big Canon conference. Was that in Indiana, was it? I mean, um, that was in Louisville. Louisville, uh, yep. But uh, your comment about... Um, being behind the lens and being behind the wheel. I hope to be behind the wheel a lot more. Uh, actually, recently, or I wouldn't say recently, but um, last year uh, I was at Grid Lime Rock and I did a Tesla Model 3 race for the first time at Lime Rock, which was so cool. And we can talk about that more. But uh, yeah, electrify all the things. Just going right into it. I love it. Like yeah. just, just a man of many talents. And I, I'm not trying to be offensive. To, uh, Larry and I go way back, probably 20, 20 years or so. And, um, you know, and I'll start out by saying I officiated him and his lovely wife, May's wedding. They have, he's a father, a husband. Um, but just what I would call it like an entrepreneur taking your skill set. And as you said, you got into this because you loved cars. How can you dabble your your talent into the automotive world. And that's exactly what you did. But I, I do love you talking right out of the gate, right before we hit record. I said, not exclusive about EVs, passionately, intimately, your relationship with EV and electrify, all things electrify. But I, you know, for anybody listening here, they either, who is Larry Chen or, oh, snap, cool. I want to hear Larry's stance on EV and where you're at. But I mean, you're in your garage that you built. It's an impressive backdrop. You know, you have great partners such as, I mean, you just dropped that thing with 7-Eleven, Pennzoil. I mean, that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for joining us. Um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, mean, let me just introduce myself um, before I just kind of jump right out in the gate saying I'm racing Model 3s and stuff. <laughs> uh, my name is Larry Chen. I'm a car culture and automotive photographer. I'm a Canon Explorer of Light, which means I'm actually a Canon-sponsored photographer. Uh, I, they signed me up when I was 35 years old uh, in winter of 2019. And yeah, it's always been a dream of mine to be an official Canon photographer. And um, I'm the only automotive one. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of them are wedding photographers, uh, landscape, nature, conflict, the news, this, that, and other, everything under the sun. I'm the only automotive. And um, I've been shooting for 20 years now. I'm the Formula Drift official photographer. I'm also the Pike Speak official photographer. I just love cars and car culture. It's what I do every single day. I take pictures of cars. I've been to, I've been all over the world, over 50 countries photographing cars and car culture. Um, it's, it's a dream job. It's what I love to do. So then the whole EV thing, it's, it's cool because when I first started following racing and car culture, there was pretty much none of that, you know, and I watched it grow to this point where now I mentioned Pike speak, uh, Romain Dumas has the overall record by almost a minute in his, uh, Volkswagen IDR Pike speak crazy downforce machine which we actually worked for Volkswagen to capture that whole effort. And it was a big effort, if you can imagine. Uh, just a little side note on that. I've never seen a, a vehicle move so much volume of air out of its way. Hmm. I've been r shooting racing, like I said, for so long. But not only does it sound like a jet airplane because of how much air it's moving when it's passing by you and when it's moving through time space, you can see the environment around it get affected by this thing. You know, it's picking up all the dust on the ground. It's pushing all of the foliage and bushes and trees and bushes to the side as it's going through. But it's also shooting dust, rocks and stuff. I don't even know. So, so high in the air, you can't even see where it's going. It's like cleaning the road. It's like a vacuum cleaner. And that, that's kind of the moment where I was thinking like, wow, okay, there is space. There is 
room for EV performance in car culture. It is, it, it's like very focused, of course. Um, it's using its benefits, uh, which for those of you guys who don't know, Pikes Peak, it's a hill climb and it starts at around 9,000, 8,000 feet and it ends at 14,115 feet. And when you're actually climbing uh, up at 14,000 feet, it's 40% less oxygen, maybe a little more than sea level. So then you're not getting the degradation of power for a normal ice vehicle as you're going up. But what I found recently, and it's something that a lot of the EV teams have been battling, is heat soak and also battery um, drain. That, that they're still dealing with. They still lose horsepower, but in a different way. I just, sorry, I just ramble on. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. And I, it just conjures a lot of questions for me because analogously, I would say that you had that aha moment at Pikes Peak and seeing, so two things for me is Volkswagen, what do they do with that? Because as you said, there is room, there is space. I like how you said that because you're not just this curmudgeon old dude and obviously we're fairly young all things relatively speaking but then also analogously i would say it's like applying your craft of photography it's going film to digital and saying like hey there is a place for film there is a place to have this kind of analog by no means this photography analog but film compared to digital and right so it's almost like you can still pay homage and have respect of your old dots and Z, but man, it'd be, it, it's really cool to see this Volkswagen ID or the, you know, even the Miura or something, you know, like, and, and then, and then you start cutting into supercars and what Remots is doing or, or some other, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, <laughs> and I think maybe this is far enough where seven minutes in, it's probably a good time for me to just kind of lay out my view on EV. Is that, is that, nope. is it too early for Absolutely. that? That's why yeah. we're here. No, I got popcorn right here. I'm yeah. here for it, man. And, and so is everybody. Cause I, I'm just going to lay it out for, because for you are so close to so many different cars. I mean, just coming from Tokyo auto salon, working with Toyota, working with different manufacturers, as you said, documenting this journey, you know, most recently talk about Pikes peak, Leah block and Lucy block racing the all electric Sierra. So go ahead. Yeah. I, I just was in Tokyo shooting for Nissan, shooting their Hyperforce, which is an EV vehicle. We shot that in, in Tokyo. Um, my, my stance on it is that I'm, you and I are going to be able to continue what we love to do in our lifetime. And it, we're, we'll just be, if we love ice vehicles, and if we love modifying these classic vehicles and even the vehicles that are coming out in this current generation, it's not going to affect us in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I think there's a, there's definitely a place for, um, electric, electric swaps, all new electric vehicles as a method of transportation, but the enthusiast side and just like a worldwide look at it, if, if you look at a, if you look at it from like a worldwide lens, um, it's just going to stick around. Like I, th there's just so many different technologies with, uh, uh, you know, uh, alternative fuels and, um, what is that? Synthetic fuels. Yep. And also the, there's that whole technology of creating, Hydrogen. yeah, creating fuels, um, from the existing energy that we have. What's the term for that? I, don't, I forgot what the term for that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Basically, we're not we're not adding carbon to the atmosphere with with creating this sort of fuel, right? It's it's like we're using the energy that we already have, and I think that's really important along with EV because uh, if if you go to countries outside of the U.S., if you if you live in Santa Monica or Los Angeles or San Francisco and you're in that bubble and you look around and you see all these Teslas and electric vehicles, you think, oh, why are people driving these gas vehicles or diesel vehicles when you could just drive an electric vehicle? Well, as soon as you step out of the country, you go to Southeast Asia, you go to 
um, even uh, South America, Central America, um, you go to you know parts of Europe, it's basically impossible. The infrastructure is so much further away than what we have here in the mm -hmm. US. Like you wouldn't even, you couldn't even imagine it. And let's talk about even Japan, right? You think Japan is so far in terms of technology. It could not be any further away from adopting EV wholly. It's just basically impossible right now. You know, in the future, who knows? Uh, I think beyond our lifetime. But the point is, you you see companies like Toyota uh, really um, just having a solid stance on, okay, you know what? Let's just do what we can with what we have now, which is really investing heavily into hybrid, which I think is such a good job. It's, it's just being more efficient, um, being uh, just um, using, utilizing uh, technology to our advantage, which is potentially if you're doing your commute day to day, you may never just, you may never even use the gas engine on board or generator, you know, you could just use the hybrid technology, but then as soon as you need to take that road trip or drive further or skip a charge, I, I was just thinking about it just now, just this last trip, I landed in Indianapolis. Okay. I went to uh, Avis to pick up my rental car and I see that they have a bunch of Model 3s there. I I would love to drive that and use it for my work, but it's impossible. It's yeah. there's just the infrastructure is just not there yet. Again, it'll eventually get there. But guess what I did? Landed in Indy, drove two and a half hours to Louisville, uh, did a speaking thing. Uh, you know, I, I valeted the car. Next morning, what did I do? Drove two and a half hours to Cincinnati to do a shoot, and then immediately after four hours of shooting, drove back to Louisville. Yeah, this could you do other, that? Could you just, do that with an EV? No, right? It's impossible. Yeah. It's it's literally impossible. The but this is a, this is a top. There. This is a topic that always comes up, and you have a fleet of vehicles, you know, there in your garage, in your workspace, in your studio, and uh, it's finding the right tool for the job. Just like you have lenses, you have cars, right? So just as that filter, you have a filter of what you're going to drive. You know, I mean, more often than not, you're driving your your LX, right? You're, you're driving kind of your SUV because you know it's unapologetic. It's going to get me there. I could fit all my stuff in it, but then you barely drive your Porsche Turbo. Do you love your orange bang? Yeah, of course you do. And I'm talking about all of, you know, Larry's cars here. And, and you know, you have, you have, you know, your Tundra, you have multiple different vehicles, but it's, it's just finding the right tool for the job. Am I correct in saying, is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So, happening? so like, you know, doing the the Tesla EV race um, at Lime Rock in the Model Three, super fun. Um, the the dynamics of of driving are there. You know, there's a couple things that are lost in terms of like kind of a sense of speed because you don't have like gears what that that you're in. Um, but I love that racetracks are adopting. Hey, let's put these chargers here because people are going to bring their EV vehicles and we want them to be able to charge. But that's like a very specific use case. Pretty much, I look at my vehicles right now and I'm like, I think about what I do every single day and it's basically impossible to use electric, full electric. For hybrid, no problem. Like um, we just picked up a, a, a motorhome because we use that for productions. You know, it has a 50 gallon gas tank because you need to go far. You need to be in the sticks. Sometimes we're in the desert for a week at a time. And then, you know, it has a built-in gas generator, fully off-grid. We're charging all our batteries. We're doing full productions. Um, and then we're self-sustaining. If that was full electric, it would just, there's just no way. It's yeah. just so far gone. And then towing our vehicles, towing our vehicles, hundreds, thousands of miles for shoots. Um, or, or overlanding, you know, this week is King of the Hammers. My guys are currently out there right now with two of my um, off-road builds. We, we're we chasing for hundreds of miles a time. Or what about Baja? We chased the Baja 1000 in my Tundra. Uh, it was the craziest, it was 1,200 mile, or 1,200 uh, 
Yeah, 1,200 miles. 12 yeah, 1,200 yeah. miles. Yeah, it was the, it was the longest and it, it's been. In yeah, and it was years. the first time that it was backwards. Mm-hmm. So it went from La Paz think, up to Ensenada. Yeah, I, it went from La Paz to Ensenada. And it was the first time I ever chased a race where I had to shoot the start, jump in an airplane, a commercial plane, fly, fly from La Paz to Tijuana, get picked up uh, in, in, our, in the LC200 Land Cruiser to continue chasing the race and then shoot the finish line. This stuff logistically is impossible with EV, but with alternative fuels is completely 100% possible. I really do believe in the whole alternative fuel thing because in terms of like not wasting what we already have, think of how many millions and millions and millions of vehicles and engines that we have currently that just all of a sudden, if we run alternative fuels and eco fuels, they turn into uh, something that is eco friendly, and we're not just adding to the carbon in the air. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't. I don't, I don't know if you know too much about this, but I'm kind of starting to look into it. What it is is you're using um, energy like uh, wind energy, solar energy. You're just using energy to create this fuel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're not actually, again, adding more carbon. You're just using the existing um, carbon that we've already taken, and uh, we're we're just recycling it. You know, so so it's just like this cycle. It, it, it's not there yet where it's a hundred percent, but it's getting to the point where it's pretty close. It, I understand that it's still very expensive to do, but it's a start. Yeah, and. I really, really, really believe in that because every one of my vehicles that I have here in my shop can become eco-friendly. All the race cars in the world, every vehicle, airplanes even, become sustainable from that technology versus just building these new crazy cars with longer and longer range, bigger and bigger batteries. There's a place for both of them. Yeah. You know, this this last... Um, season of Capturing Car Culture, my show that we have on Haggerty. This last season, we traveled to so many places in Southeast Asia and Asia. And uh, I started pretty strong this this year also with uh, um, uh, going to Hong Kong, um, going to Thailand. All these places that we're traveling, I'm seeing on the ground what cars and car culture is like, including just the normal method of transportation and man, good luck trying to get an autonomous vehicle to drive in any <laughs> of those places or, or, or even just getting electric infrastructure. And what's crazy is I haven't been to Hong Kong, I think in almost 14, 15 years, it looks exactly the same. All the taxis really? are the same Toyota crowns in a moment. Once you switch them all to eco friendly or, or uh, renewable fuel, they all, the, the whole thing changes, you know, versus just scrapping all of it, all of the metal, all of that plastic, everything, and then replacing it with new vehicles. I just, I just don't see it. It's just so far, not, at least not in our lifetime, really. Well, again, it, it's, it, it is like that, you know, film going to digital. It's not an overnight thing. I don't think you can turn on a switch like everybody potentially. It, you just plug in. You just plug in. And there's dirty there's dirty energy. There's clean energy. You know, there's people that have panels in their roofs and they're running, you know, 60, 70 percent. You know, Matt Teske does a good job of that talking about Chargeway. And um, most recently we had uh, E for Electric and he was lived in California for a long time and he moved to Thailand and he talked about autonomous vehicles and how efficient they are there and he talked i mean i said what's good about ev and um it was he was kind of hard pressed he said he's really looking forward to mass transit you know rails and and things like that and also thai culture has a lot of scooters so you know imagine charging all of those two-wheeled vehicles because we're not exclusive to four-wheel on electrify news and electrify expo obviously it's all about mobility you know and i it could be um you know boots and shoes that move you faster or bikes and two wheels but you know specifically about you capturing motorsports you know i mean even the even the image right here behind me that's uh was that 24 hours yeah 24 uh, hours in daytona yeah daytona excuse me daytona we think mm-hmm. that's milliner but it's probably not milliner shout out to our boy tommy but because uh right who was he who was, was on, on that, that team he was, he was on, on the team, team that year yeah, but yeah. um 
yeah, I had to find here in the corner. I am in a safe place. Don't worry about me. Um, <laughs> uh, but but your your perspective, I think, is healthy because, like I said, you are a family man. So you talked about in our lifetime. So that's where the dialogue, and I want to get your thought on this, is where you know your kids get excited about room room, you know, because they're around all the time, as are mine, right? But I think there is this shift of why does it need to be loud? Why does it need to be a little more stinky? We're, we're, we're in that kind of analog cusp. We're on that tipping point of saying, hey, there is application of this technology and how does it apply to us? Like you said, this Tesla Model 3 race, um, you know, Randy Pope's an unplugged performance and you talk about Dumas and his record, you know, that Volkswagen ID, what is Volkswagen doing with all that technology? You say moving all this air efficiency is a big thing. I mean, the new Prius, as you talk about Toyota, the, the hybrid, dude, that thing looks sick. It looks great. It finally yeah, doesn't it look great. like a doorstop anymore, amazing. right? Yeah. Like it used to just be like hold door, you know, like it'd be a, a wedge. Now yeah. it's like, it's aesthetically pleasing. There's just so much just, I mean, car culture, <laughs> as you know, um, it's the biggest it's ever been, period. And it's something that you can't even hold back. No. I don't think we're at the peak yet. Um, you look at, at all facets of car culture, whether it be racing, like look at F1, look how big F1 is. I yeah. never thought in my lifetime F1 would be this big. You look at what Pat Long and Lufka cult and Aaron water and just culture in general, none of that stuff existed when I was growing up. I could have yeah. only dreamed of that, you know, but look at us engaging right here and people listening to this and being like, yeah, you're right. And, and now it's like here, you know, here's my oldest son, Parker, who's trying to get into to the biz and he is, but he's 17 years old. So I think internet, it, it's kind of a good and a bad thing, right? Put your phone down. Well, I'm working, you know, and I know you're, you're, we're constantly on the road. You're doing things. You're sh so it's it's just how you know how but, you manage it, right? Before I forget, let me just uh, mention this one point. That's an interesting talking point about EVs and what you're saying about cars making noise. Uh, this is something that I've said many, many times on interviews and videos, and it's it's something that I think about all the time. And it's something that I think the EV companies have been starting to address. So the, the, the crazy thing about cars, it, we as humans, we, we were never meant to move that fast, you know? Um, yeah. But also, um, we, we may never have been meant to, to, to or we were may, maybe, you know, in some other universe, we were never meant to enjoy music and I don't know, lo love music and music may not be a thing, you know, music is so, so much of a big part of our lives. I mean, it's really, a lot of people say they can't even live without music. Right? Big facts. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and most people live their entire lives just for music. That is related for, from what I, can uh what i've just figured out is uh that's the same way with cars right you think the four rotors would be popular if they didn't make the sound that they make you know great point in, in, yeah. in a way the rotaries are actually pretty inefficient and just the worst way to make power <laughs> you know i mean like i i get it but you it's love cool. it it's so you cool <laughs> the way it, it works and the technology and internal combustion you know it's it still works and obviously you know because of mazda winning in lama was such a big deal and there is a place for it in terms of like how it can work and how it can be efficient in making power uh let's be honest we all love it for the sound yeah you know whether it be one rotor or, you know, two, three, four, five, six, oh, whatever, yeah. uh, getting to the point where it's 12 rotor. Now I think what Rob is trying to do, Rob Dom, um, we love it because of the sound. We don't need the sound. It's not actually making the cars go any faster, but I would say a lot of my cars I have be just because of the sound, mm -hmm. because we love the music. It, it, make something that's just a method of transportation beyond that it it makes it, it have emotion and it gives it this aura and 
it, it just changes it, you know, it, it's because it's making sound and it's literally uh, all of our senses, we're enjoying it, like the smell, the touch, the feel, you know, the way it moves your body. And then you, it's like the final little thing is like the sound, the beautiful music all the time when I'm driving my cars, I'll just get it just to the point where it's entering boost, you know, just so there's some <laughs> pressure in the manifold. And then, then it just makes everything better. You know, I, I'm just having so much more fun, even if I'm, I'm not even going that fast. Yeah. It, it, it just changes you, you know, it's a big part of you. And then of course, now when you go into EV, that's all gone. And that's why, um, recently, uh, or last, last world time attack, I actually went down to Australia, uh, to Sydney motorsport park and Hyundai let me drive their Ionic five N, which it simulates gears and it also simulates sound. And it, it, I wouldn't say it was good. It's far from perfect, but it was something, Okay, there was something there, the way it acts, how violent it is. Um, and and that goes to show like it's not just about the performance aspect of it you know it's a, a lot of people including uh i think matt farrow will will say this too when you're driving like a re remat is that how you say it? remats yeah remats yeah when you're driving a remats or a tesla plaid um at normal traffic speeds it just feels it might as well be like a model three or model Y, you know, it's the same thing. It doesn't really give you that feel. It doesn't feel special, but when I'm driving my two forty Z or when I'm driving my R 32 or R 34, or even my like more modern cars, like my a 90 Supra or J 86 or whatever at just normal traffic speeds. Oh my God. Just the motion overcomes yeah. me. You know, I just, I can't even stop it. I'm like, it transforms me. And obviously it's not just me. It's so many people in the world that, that this, it's something that we just can't give away. We can't get rid of. We can't give up our music mm. and that's going to be a problem. That's something that we're going to have to address, but that's, that's the whole biofuel thing, you know, eco-friendly fuel thing that's coming in that I think it's it's just going to change things. I mean, like, look at Formula E versus Formula One, right? Formula One, the sound, the 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 way it sounds when it's like decelerating, or even um, what when I'm shooting endurance racing, right? Like the the Toyota um, hybrid cars or uh, any of the other hybrid race cars, yeah. How cool does it sound? Even when it switches just from EV, when it takes off like a rocket ship, completely silent. But as soon as it, the 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 internal combustion engine comes in, for those of you guys who have heard that sound and that transition, there's nothing like it. It sounds so crazy. It's just like a all of a sudden a big explosion, boom, and then it's just like this hum and whine, and it's just like it just changes you i'm like getting the chills just thinking yeah. about that sound you know it's just so good versus complete silence that's like uh uh it's, it's almost like you're you're denying yourself of this sense really i think you know you know we're talking about music and i, I love that analogy i think that makes sense because yes i think there's a soundtrack to life you know and you turn on a particular song and you you smell the smells. I mean, again, the, the image behind me, right, at, at Sebring, you're trying to capture emotion. So it's it's kind of ironic that you're talking about these sounds and these feels and these smells. You're a photographer. You're trying to capture that with the photography. That's why you're you're blurring these lights. And you told me the story about you capturing this. The Christmas lights were close. You got them pan, and did it, right? And you're trying to paint this picture. And your paintbrush is this camera. But much more than that, you are a car guy. So at the essence of it, you're the orchestrator. So both between this exhaust sounds right, that one doesn't sound right. You know, the, as we know, the BMW E46 exhaust was, it sounds like a jet ski. You put the right exhaust on it and you're like, oh, snap, right? And like SMG yeah. trans. Remember like when SMG trans, you're like, I don't know. I think I could shift faster than that thing, right? And you're like, it, it's, you know, and obviously SMG caught some flack, but 
this is just this this shift and that's why i really enjoy this larry i don't know if you've tuned into other episodes of this but i i enjoy it because i'm going down this path along with anybody listening to this so you might bring somebody in and say hey listen to this podcast i really enjoy this conversation with jared it's healthy it's it's progressive and i give my stance i give my two points because you and i are at this cusp we are i think this last formidable generation you know because again my my kids are you know one's about the same age as yours but my older one he's on this this transition point you know and and i i love the analogy of a music and soundtrack i don't think it'll go away but how do we apply that technology of dumas moving air as you say there's the aero component and and you know we talk about ev and you talk about batteries but let's talk about efficiency let's talk about like you say biofuels i mean you work with pennzoil you know they're going to play a major role all these lubricant companies it's not going away you know that's like mm. the movie like who killed the electric vehicle right and everybody says here's these you know lubricants and and oils and fossil fuels i think just the dialogue it's healthy for here we are two guys primarily coming from drifting not exclusively yeah. just like ev but we enjoy it all and i think that's where you and i are kind of like we have this this big this big scope of from from drifting which everybody thought was just this fad and now it's like become awesome and here's jim farley at ford saying like we're not denouncing we're still going to make badass v8s but we're also going to make you know the raptor r we're also going to make switch gear which is an all electric essentially raptor which he built mm -hmm. in conjunction with our boy vaughn getting junior rtr I, I like i would love for you to share this with people later and just be like hey this is this is me talking about ev like yeah do i own one no could i see it <sighs> For, for the right job. I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if, if we needed, if I had a daily commute, of course, it would make sense to do that. But my day, my daily commute is <laughs> crazy. You know? You're going so, out to Johnson Valley, you're going to yeah, come home, yeah. go back out there. Yeah, right, right, right. Or, or, you know, flying across the world, getting yep. into a rental car or some someone's build or, or some press vehicle or whatever. And it's just like, so much movement and then the, just the energy density of ev hopefully maybe one day it will be solved maybe it will get there um but right now it, it's not there but despite that i feel like people still want that music and that emotion uh of of the internal combustion engine there's just something so cool about this thing that's mechanical in nature and but it's it has this lore beyond what it actually is you know it's it is crazy i mean we we've we've dedicated our lives to this thing you know yeah. it's it's yeah it's insane and, and and it's coming right so you talked about going to tokyo auto salon so you know taught and shooting that nissan that ev project or hype mm -hmm. what was it what was it exactly yeah so it's it's just a concept car from nissan and what I photographed was wasn't really a car. It was more of a, a art installation or statue, moving statue, if that makes sense. It's yeah. that's what most concept cars are. Most concept cars are made out of clay, and this thing just happened to move under its own power slowly, but <laughs> it, it moved. And I did something that I've never done before. After shooting for all this time, for whatever reason, I never did a walking panning shot. Okay. Like, uh, you know, kind of, like one of the things right that now. we love doing, we love rolling shots a lot. Uh -huh. I actually posted on my Instagram. We love doing rolling shots from car to car, but this car moved pretty slow, you know, because like I said, it, it is an art piece. They just didn't want to damage it also as one off, you know, built in a studio. Mm -hmm. And I just walked on the sidewalk next to it holding my camera and just, I was just shooting. And that's how I was able to get it moving. Like the motion, show the motion. Like yeah. it, it, it could have been going, like, if you look at the photo, it's like, oh, wow, that thing was going fast. <laughs> it was going walking pace. Oh, there you I are. I see it now. Along with yeah, it. you're yeah. hyper, the hyper force. So yeah, if yeah, you go to Larry underscore yeah. Chen underscore F-O-T-O, yeah. um, you could look at more of Larry's photos. And I mean, Larry has uh, absolutely amassed such a great following and and doing all the car stuff. So we, that was that was interesting. We did a shoot recently, actually, for Robert Downey Jr. Uh, mm -hmm. Downey's Dream Cars is a show on max or hbo max it's called max now Max now, yeah. um and we we actually went to the premiere um mr downey was there 
And uh, it was a story about him building six vehicles, right? Half of the six vehicles turned to, uh, or became EV swaps. Half of them were ice swaps, but like they, they, they just improved in um, miles per gallon or they just improved in efficiency. Uh, e either both, both of the groups were better for the environment pretty much. Um, like for example, one of them was a Mercedes like diesel that was super efficient, uh, un inefficient, like a old, one of those huge boats. Right. Yeah. And what they ended up doing was they actually put a, a Humvee, a crazy six liter V8 diesel in it, but it actually made it way more efficient, gave huh. it a lot more power, could do burnouts, could do honestly almost a wheelie because I drove that thing. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, we photographed those cars. One of them was an El Camino that he lifted and made like this crazy overland um, vehicle. And instead of using the stock vehicle the motor that probably got five miles per gallon after all this time, uh, with the inefficient transmission and also inefficient um, everything, they they did a, a turbo like a modern inline four turbo swap. Yeah, uh, that out of a like a modern Chevy pickup truck. Sick. Right, so modern transmission, um, modern engine, way more efficient. And then some of the EV vehicles, right? So like they did um, uh, a Volkswagen bus. Right, a Volkswagen bus. Instead of using that um, air cooled motor, they put an EV swap. But the coolest part about this still retain the manual transmission, mm. and which really blew me away because this manual transmission still had a reverse. Which means if you put it in reverse and you ran the motor backwards, it would still make you go forward. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, no, so I, I, I thought about this uh, a lot, actually. I was thinking, okay, it's cool that all these EV swaps, it's one speed, and it's the motor mm -hmm. just going forward and backwards, and it's the gearing is the way it is, and that's it. Why not attach a, like a normal manual transmission? Because that's a big complaint, right, for a lot yeah. of people, right? They're out a there. Lot of people, a lot of people, there, man. A lot of people will be like, Oh, uh, I like shifting my gears and even if I'm going faster, it's just fun to be able to have that control and it's just more engaging as a driver, right? It's, it's just like film and digital, like you're saying for, for photography. Well, I drove this EV bus and it was so cool to be able to shift through the gears and it was legitimately faster if I was, if I accelerated them first. And I topped out the RPM of the electric motor, and then I would shift to second, and it was almost like a, a boom, like a big clutch kick because of how much power I was. Like that. It, it wasn't really it's meant for that. It's instantaneous, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that said, it's something that can be dialed in more to mimic an actual engine. The 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 problem with it right now, um, as we've, as I've. Um, seen uh my buddy rob carlson was with me when we we're driving it and he was kind of explaining to me what's happening he's like well the problem is there's nothing there's no like drag on the electric motor for it to go down in rpm it's not like you could just go vroom, vroom, like a normal right. engine you can't just you can just go vroom, vroom, red line duh, and then just let it go down with an electric motor as soon as you hit it it'll hit red line and it'll slowly come down because there's just no resistance. Yeah. So what I was doing when I was shifting in between the gears and stuff, I was trying to play with it like it's a normal transmission or a normal engine. Wasn't working that way. Yeah. Which which is interesting because you can it's a four speed transmission. You can start in first or second or third or fourth. You can just leave it in fourth and drive around all day, but it's so slow. It's like uh, and you could like, it's getting to the point where the motor's like in between it's, um, I guess magnets, right? It's like, yeah. cut, 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 cut. and then it's like bucking back and forth. And then it finally starts going. But if you put it in third or second, it's so smooth, buttery smooth. You can drive all day without shifting. Yeah. But here I am like, 
<laughs> you know, trying to be that hero, trying to just get as much speed out of it as possible. First gear, ah! you know, topping out red line and second gear. I thought it was so interesting. And it's definitely a concept that can be uh, done better. I think it can be something that can, it, it's just, there's just so much room for improvement. And I think it's interesting. Of course, it's not, it just doesn't have the same essence as but it's a, getting a there normal. what you just described was kind of feeding your traditional this is called traditional feels and emotions so you yeah. having that shift and 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 again with this you know since i've started this podcast you know last year in 23 um bj says hey we just want to take a different angle i said well i don't own an ev i'm going down this journey i announced nitro cross which is all electric yeah. Right. Um, and, and we've seen this EV stuff grow before our eyes. Um, and I think it is evolving into what we know is traditional and going with the trans. And I mean, a lot of friends of ours, you know, if it's if it's Rywire, if it's BC, um, you know, all of these people are applying this EV technology. Also, fun fact, Remots, again, the supercar does hold the record. For the fastest EV in reverse. That's right. Going backwards. 171 <laughs> miles per hour. That's crazy. Going in reverse in an electric car. <laughs> so just I, fun fact. <laughs> it's 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 too easy for people in our industry just to dim- dismiss it and just say, ah, it's it's just whatever um, appliance. Be- I mean, they are really, but. Um, Matt Farrah calls it a widget, which. which yeah. You know, he owns, you know, he owns a Mach-E. He said he'll buy another one. You know, Volkswagen gets scrutinized quite a bit. Obviously, Tesla, um, you know, I know you shoot with Jay and Leno's Garage. And I've I've talked about Jay a few times and, you know, his 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 alternative fuels. You know, you look at steam, you look at obviously, you know, hydrogen, you look at all the, all you know, and some of the funnest cars he has. Yeah, he's got the tank car, which is that big tank engine on on wheels and it's huge mm-hmm. but you know you just saw the cyber truck i know you guys shot the cyber truck with him at his at his space and his facility i know lewis um who's near and dear to our heart l2 he talked about like is is it something i want is it cool you know tyler was like the it might be fatty you know meaning mm-hmm. it's a fad not fatty right. like a big right. car but it is a big car yeah. um the, just all of this comes up in conversation that's that's why i enjoy it. and that's why i was like all right you know they were booking booking you and i was like i I, i'm interested to hear larry's perspective and stance the what's one thing that i like to talk about is all these cars that are just stuck in time right a 32 ford is always going to be 32 ford nothing is ever going to replace the 32 ford same thing with the r32 r34 and so on and so forth yeah i'm just worried yeah 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 that that you know 69 Mustang is a 60 minus Mustang. That's it. It's one year, one and done. What exists, exists. And it's forever in history books. And it's a, you know, we love it or hate it. It's there. And the PT Cruiser, am I right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> come on. The 2.4 liter turbo version. Hey, you know? right. yeah. So, so that's, it's just something that's so interesting to me. It's almost like those cars will live on forever it's it's we've loved those cars we we've, we've loved them we've transformed them we've enjoyed them and then once they got created they just entered the history books forever mm-hmm. what what i'm worried about a lot with these ev vehicles is that it's not going to be that way it, there's just going to be like cool bro you know I, I i don't know i mean maybe the first tesla the roadster yeah. you know, because i saw that at tesla. future collector car show at barrett jackson they actually had one there at the show. I was a judge at the show. I didn't. And there's no reason for me to pick it because I wasn't like the the original or, or um, restoration judge or whatever. I, I my title was um, um, ba- basically I just needed to pick the the vehicle that had the best story mm-hmm. or or that the original concept of the build was followed through all the way, and it was like something that actually had a lot of heart and soul and from the owner and the car, the vehicle itself, I ended up picking, um, a starlet old starlet, oh, which cool. had a great story. But I look at that roadster. I'm like, that's cool. That's there. And I'm, I'm guessing that's probably gone up in price a lot. Um, because of what 
you know, Tesla has become. I, I'm just worried that these a lot of these cars coming out now will be recycled and just destroyed. They're dispos- disposable, little vanilla, not that personality. And and again, this is this is your perspective, and you're absolutely entitled to that because here you are that talks so emphatically about the skylines and the culture that fed you and I, and everybody has this perspective. So I think it's I think both you and I need to experience EV, not just you know it, it's hard to unthink and unlearn and unsee what you've seen and feel right like those emotions again going to goodwood festival speed and seeing that two-cylinder fiat that has more displacement up and down with those pistons or and and then seeing i mean you were there you were at the shoot with the with the huna the hunatron right yeah. you were you were there you got to see and witness and talking to ken about that you know rip kb forever um he talked about what that car can do and what it can't do what it can yeah. do uniquely so so that that vehicle was insane see um, here we go now we're talking larry <laughs> that vehicle was insane but it's it just there was just a lot of things about it that were difficult for it, it was difficult for ken to to do the same things that he could do uh in the unicorn right so mm-hmm. one thing that i figured out and it's something that i've talked to a lot of the other people surrounding the car about was that it was kind of hard for him to modulate tire like wheel speed um it, and of course he was getting better and better at it at the end of the shoot but the nice thing about the unicorn is man you put that thing in second or third gear and you just bounce off the rev limiter and shooting fire and all that and then he's able to have centimeter uh precision with it legitimately mm-hmm. you know i mean you look at the the photo of him on pike's peak completely mixed surface shot uh, of him almost going off of eva corner that's millimeter precision uh you know he stacked a couple rocks on top of each other and uh, like this tall and that was his marker and he hit his marker with that precision now with the ev oh my god you know, you you know, I'm Ken's number one fan. You know, yeah. Everybody will compl- will will say that they're Ken's number one fan, but it was just hard for him to replicate this the same line over and over yeah. and over in that EV because it's just so ahead of its time. You know, maybe in the next generation of it, if Leah drives it, whatever, maybe she can get it where it's like even closer millimeter right. uh, precision, but it was just not there at the time. And, and one of the big complaints that everyone has is, is the sound. And I honestly did miss the sound of, of crazy twin turbo fire breathing V8. That's not to say this thing wasn't loud. It was so loud. I had to wear earplugs all the time right. because of the mechanical noise that it had. And also the wheel speed. The wheel speed of something going from zero to 150 to zero to 150 is so loud. I have to wear earplugs, otherwise it would damage my ears. Uh, it, it was just so crazy to see it. I'm glad I got to see it. You know, it was one of the last big. It was the last big shoot I ever did with Ken in Mexico, and of course before that was uh, the one in Las Vegas with the ultimate shutdown. Yep. Yeah. Yep, RIP. I was I was pulling up some photos because uh, you know this this fat FAT. They're doing an ice race in uh, in Aspen, Colorado. They were just in a Zell MC, um, which I believe is Switzerland. But the the Huna the Hunatron was there and it raced on the ice with mm-hmm. spikes. It was pretty sweet. Um, it, it, what what are you most excited about when it comes to like the EV space? Like again, seeing Dumas seeing the sierra car which uh, back to your point you know this the shifting and that was really difficult for lucy block you know um just a different feeling different emotion what are you most excited about as as we're kind of wrapping things up here i know you're a busy man but what excites you most about it Mm, i think um it's tough to say i mean of course uh hill climb and uh racing where it makes sense Okay. Uh, that's why do you feel formula cross- e is a little do you think e is a little forced like formula e i just it's so weird to me that it's it's so it's 
it's it's so weird to me that formula e is like unloved compared to uh f1 but mm -hmm. it's like it's still open wheel really good racing mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense why it's not as loved i don't know why um, i think all the points that you just spoke about it, it's it's yeah. it's just that that mental shift of like wait what like here comes the cars Woo. but with nitro cross I, I always chime in here you get to hear the gravel underneath the carbon and underneath this so it's it's a different sensation the power is immediate i'm thousand horsepower it's capable machine so you don't get just the you know not just the squealing of the tires even mm -hmm. you know vaughn and the mach e 1400 very capable machine different sensation you know and mm -hmm. talked about the audio t-pain making the, the the exhaust note you know i just watched will i am have a a, a a music car like these things so back to your soundtrack concept I, I think you're right it's it's noise it's feel it's emotion it's what we've learned and grown mm -hmm. grown up with but yeah maybe again, maybe even time attack basically with the technology that we have now here um i'm actually interested in seeing um other kinds of racing adopt it um it's going to be a long time before they can do endurance racing like 24 hour races mm -hmm. um or desert races 1200 miles across you know baja california but there's just certain types of racing that it makes sense yep. um drag racing obviously uh is is it's already um kind of adopted ev yeah um, and then, of course, hybrid technology. Better hybrid technology, I think, would be super useful. Uh, and, or even just some other kind of energy capture technology. You know, like I, what's really interesting to me is uh, that flywheel technology of like still retaining energy, but in a different way, not actually in a battery, but in a flywheel, right? Yeah. Like you slow down and it speeds up this flywheel to like, crazy 100,000 RPM or something. And then you release that energy back into going back, going forward again. Oh, there's just so many things that, that are interesting to me because that's the beauty about car culture. You know, there's just so many facets of car culture that is interesting. And I mean, that's how I'm able to keep going every single day. There's just too many stories to tell. I just don't have enough time to tell all these stories, you know? Yeah, and and you do such a good job of it, and it's it's so funny. Some of the creature comforts that you don't enjoy is what other people do enjoy. So making a car digestible, like a Prius, where it is, it's not the beautiful canvas of like you say this, you know, this GR eighty six or the the GR Supra or you know just out of the gate, just a fun, cool car. The the Prius needs to be a little more digestible. But now it's kind of evolving. Like I mean, the Prius has got to be selling very what like twenty five years. I mean, how yeah. long has it been, right? And then and and you know you talked about the the shifting right some people are like i don't even know how to drive one right like that's the millennial uh security system they joke about right but cvt transmission was created so you don't get the shift yeah. right so <laughs> it's it's just you and i serve a different purpose and again i i golf a lot i i'm out in cars do i do i race no um can i for sure of course but i don't know i i love this conversation you know what's interesting and it's something that I kind of just, I've been thinking about and I just kind of thought about it again. Uh, you look at something like Barrett Jackson, right? Uh, it, Barrett Jackson pretty much lives off of the, the concept that I brought up about, you know, 32 Ford, 64, 69, I'm not saying or in 2024, there are so many cars that are out now on dealerships that have that essence mm -hmm. right like the the gr cars like you said gr yaris grmn or the gr corolla marizo edition you know that thing is going to skyrocket in price mm -hmm. and it's going to be collectible and it's going to be sought after and that's not just the toyota side right ford what about the gt500 or nismo z yeah N nismo z uh r35 t-spec nismo r35 you know honda um nsx or type r or just, there's just so many things across pretty much most of the manufacturers now bmw's 
perfect example. They always mm -hmm. make these special, and Porsche is probably the leader of that, right? Right. Building these cars that are just iconic. One of one. The moment they're announced, yep. forever, always yep. going to go up in price, never yep. going to go down in price. I look at how many, I don't know, maybe it's even a million people that go to Bear Jackson over the, throughout the week, that whole time period, right? Or think of how many people it affects um, across the web or whatever who watch the shows and um, on TV or online. Uh, that that age or that that generation of people will age out and will die off. I guess it's up to us to to figure out if we can move it on to the next generation and the next generation after that. It's yeah. just something interesting to think about because it's like. Yeah, it's this big now, but as all of these people age out, I don't know, maybe the perception of cars and car culture will change, but I just don't, it's just so far, it's so far for, for me, I can't even fathom it. it. It makes sense. And again, this is, this is years so much about the emotion, again, capturing it, either be a static car, you know, talk about this Nissan, this Nissan vehicle, or, you know, go into Leno's and, and taking a photo of these steam powered cars people are like what fuel i mean how do they have to transfer fuel via horse right via carriage and then they got fuel in cars and now like again this whole experience i i think you give a fresh good perspective because you are so close to so many iconic vehicles and you've seen the history of, of just even you know your your 40 plus life you've you've seen a lot and you're and we're gonna see more and we're gonna see it you know through your through our kids eyes and you know, you have, you have hot wheels, you know, you have hot wheels of your own vehicles and, um, just all of this contributes to the automotive experience and that automotive culture and either be the lightning or the switch gear or the Remot supercar, or even like you say, just a basic model three, whatever serves your purpose. And we're, we're petrol heads. Is it going to be an electrify head? Yeah, it's, it's going to happen. It's just how, when, What's going to be that aha moment? You know, you you hear of motorcycle dudes seeing that first chopper down the road, like, yeah, that dude's badass. I want that. You know, you're not like that thing's sick. You know, <laughs> but it's like the Jetsons, yeah, which I yeah. would 100 percent do. But I think it's a, I, I think it's a. You bring a great perspective. Anything else you want to plug, man? At all? I mean, you got. So many things going on. Again, the cars of 7-Eleven is really cool. I love that activation that you did that. And But anything else you want to plug? Yeah, that. Uh, just speaking on that, that's such a normal thing that's like meant to be, right? <laughs> it, where do you go for your pit stops? In, in the US, at least, we have so many 7-Eleven gas stations um, all across Asia. Just so many places that love 7-Eleven as a place when you're mid-cruise, or it could even be your destination, but most of the time it's along the way, right? Yeah. When we're going from shoot to shoot um, in whatever car we have, uh, even if it's not cool, you, you have to stop to refill, refill your body and you just park up and it looks cool. It's just the colors. The As nostalgia. a photographer, the lighting's always seems like oh, ideal, it's the right? Best. You see, it's yeah. the best. It's so good. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, our show on Haggerty is a big part of what we do now. It is so cool to be able to partner up with a company like Haggerty where they literally just say, go awesome. and come back with content. And we don't, we legitimately do not tell them what we're shooting until it's <laughs> shot and it's just ready it's in to the publish. Can. It's in the can. Because, because I just follow the stories that I care about that I love cool. and the stories that I want to tell. And a lot of the stories that I want to retell in video that I've been able to tell before with stills. Um, there's that. Uh, we we do a lot of work with Penzoil. We do a lot of work with um, Type S. They single-handedly brought Underglow back. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. They single, as yeah. one single company, they literally said, okay, every single AutoZone, you can buy legit underglow right. and it's like legit okay. because i in japan i installed a, a type s kit on my r34 and you know the r34 is so expensive and it's just so frail and fragile it's this 25 year old car 
I don't want to drill into the chassis, right? So I just use the 3M double-sided tape. And then the next day I take it to Fuji Speedway and I go 165 miles an hour down oh. the straight. And the, the undergold survived. It didn't come off. So, Wind so tunnel tested. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so love, love what Type S is doing. Love, love what they're doing for car culture because it's not just about going fast. It's about how the car looks when it's standing still. Yeah. And I love that, you know, it, it's kind of like air ride, right? Like, who cares? You just use it when it's parked pretty much. You lay chassis, but it's so cool to do that. You know, it's just yep. sitting there looking fast, looking good, but yep. yeah. I love it. Well, Larry Chen, thank you so much again. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube, check him out on Instagram, Larry underscore C H E N underscore F O T O, um, does so many amazing things. Larry, I'll see you. Um, if not sooner than round one of formula drift, maybe see you at the nitro cross finals in Las Vegas or see you at King of the hammers, or we'll see you online for sure. Thank you so much, Larry. Bye. All right. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Electrify podcast, brought to you by the creators of Electrify Expo. Be sure to catch full video episodes on YouTube at Electrify TV and follow along on social media for daily clips and more.